It is 20 minutes to seven. Now then, this Christmas, did you get one of the must-have trendy presents? It was Which a one? DNA testing oh, kit. God, everyone was going on about those, wasn't Online it? Online testing yeah, themselves. Yeah, it became yeah, an increasingly yeah. popular gift. Millions of people around the world trying to find out about their heritage. Very interesting. So here at Good Morning Britain, one of the producers obviously did get one because they decided <laughs> to test it out. Us. Passed it around <laughs> all of us, exactly. And they wanted to find out where in the world we're really from. Where in the world, not Mars, as we've no. often suspected. It is, uh, you know, one of our planets. Richard has been uncovering the details. Richard's being our Jeremy Carl this morning. <laughs> yes, it's a brave man or woman that comes near any of us with a swab, but that's exactly <laughs> uh, what we did. I regifted my kit, by the way. Um, I don't believe I have any DNA. Now, we've seen DNA, as you mentioned before, on the Jeremy Carl show. And we've used these aforementioned swabs like these on our Good Morning presenting team to find out exactly where they came from. Now, we'll look at the results in a moment. But first, here's how it all works. We all have unique DNA. You get 50% from your father and 50% from your mother. And they, in turn, get 50% from their mother and father. By taking a sample from your cheek, a lab can test to find out your unique code or markers. Every ethnic group has its own markers, so you can find out how many markers you carry from each group. We all share some of our DNA with other people. Some are close to home, others can be the other side of the world. Scientists match them by looking at other people in their database who have also taken a DNA test. The closer you are related, the more DNA you share. Fascinating. So what did we find out about our very own Ben and Kate? Well, Ben, yes. I can confirm that you are in fact 57% English, oh, right. but you also have... 40% Irish, Scottish, and Welsh heritage. But what you probably don't know is you're 3% Greek. Oh, you do um, like a kebab. I, I like a kebab and I like some yogurt. You do. Go it's on. crash on. Thing, isn't it? <laughs> Kate, drum roll, please. We've discovered you're even more English than Benjamin. You're what? 76% oh, English, but you also have 70% North and West Europe. Right. You are 4% Iberian and what? 3%... Ashkenazi Jewish. Wow. Ashkenazi Jewish, goodness me. Right, we're That's going to try amazing. and unpick all these details. Aaron Godfrey is from the company that did the research on us and joins us now. Good morning to you, Aaron. Good yeah. morning. Uh, there's a few me. sort of standout markers there. Sure. Uh, my 3% Greekness. That's um, exciting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I would imagine that there's a lot of English in me, of course, and I've got sort of my mum, on my mum's side, there's some Welsh family as well, so that makes sense to me. But where does 3% Greek pop in? So it's, very, it's really interesting. You know, one of the things that we just explained, DNA testing helps you find your ethnic origins and it helps you find uh, people that you match to, people that share DNA with you. And um, at MyHeritage, we also have the ability to look at family trees. So the thing that you would do now is look at your family history, like delve in and try and find where that comes from. It's from a shared ancestor, from an ancestor you have many generations ago. And uh, at some point along the way, uh, they met a lovely Greek person or Greek man, Greek woman, and that's uh, filtered Amazing. into your DNA today. So I have 3% Greek. That is, it, look how far, but it's interesting looking at the map, just how far away the sort of those, those, those markers are. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Graphically. For sure. Um, it, it's fascinating what all sorts of things people learn. A few months ago, Piers discovered that he didn't have any English in him at all. That was a bit of a shock for him. Wow, yeah. And, um, Relief for the English. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, people are making incredible discoveries. And, and on the matching side, people are finding all sorts of relatives. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at some of the relatives in just a moment. But yes. what about this for Kate? I'm very excited about The Ashkenazi this. Jewish. Right, so again, um, our research we looked into and see that the English side is very supported. I mean, your very family strong. goes back hundreds of years in the UK. Is there any royalty, or do you not get there? Well, not royalty, but we, oh. we looked at your book, uh, The Joy of what, Big Nickers. <laughs> and in there, there's some you know, royal pants in there. You, you have a really nice story about your grandmother, yes. and that she came from a family um, of bricklayers, and that yes. as a wedding present, her father gave her some bricks, some bricks to build yeah. a house. So yeah. we traced that family back. They were bricklayers for generations. Really? And not only that, they, they started them young, because we found in a, in a census document from the 1850s, that um, you had a, a shared surname, Garraway, ancestor, George, 12 years old, listed as a bricklayer. Bricklaying at 12 wow. years old. Wow. So. We've always been grafters. Yeah. We've always been grafters <laughs> of Garraway. Um, now, I'm very interested, we'll talk about the Jewish community, but also the North and West Europe, 17%. That sounds exciting. And Iberian, what would North and West Europe be? What country so does that mean? North and West Europe, yeah. 
Germany, France, Holland, th those Fantastic. kinds of region. And we actually also, in our research, found a relative from there for you, from a tiny village in Normandy called wow. Le Pew. I'm very sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Mm. French isn't my strong point. But from Le Pew, you had an ancestor who was a carpenter. His name was Louis Charles, and uh, he came over to Guernsey. Um, yes, that's so where you oh ended my up. Side, so yes. they were all, all of Galloway's family, is manual labour, until um, her. Well, quite a lot, but actually, what I found out about your family, I oh, think go you're going to like even more. Go on. Um, so, I think everyone in the world knows what team you support. West Ham, of course. Through but <laughs> I think I read a, an interview with you that your family is a bit of Villa fans. You've got some Villa my, fans. My parents, yeah, my, da well, they, my dad's side of the family. My mum's, my, yeah, in the Midlands, in Birmingham. So, so your great-grandfather, um, in a census document we found on my heritage in the 1891 census, he uh, is working as a steam engine maker. Yes in the West Ham area. Right. West Ham was started by the uh, Thames Ironworks yes. Shipbuilding Company. Yes. He was working right by there when West Ham was founded. So my, no. gran my great grandfather founded West Ham? He was either in the founding <laughs> team, possibly, possibly, or he had a kickabout with the lads during his lunch break. <laughs> we don't exactly know where he was, you know, we don't have the location of his office, but we know he was working in that area, in Thames that company. Ironworks. Yeah, it's just wow. the research that we saw. This is wow. absolutely amazing. Founded on look, the shoulders of giants, that's look, what they say. Isn't you it? come oh, by your West Ham roots, honestly. There that's you go. fantastic. Look, I, I want to talk more to you because I'm so excited about the, the Jewish connection as well. But, Ben, we found someone so when you look at dna you get markers yes and we found someone who shares a huge amount of your dna markers right do you want to meet her yes um she's your second cousin twice removed her name is brianna steiner from seattle good morning brianna would you like to meet ben <laughs> hi hey brianna uh, uh, lovely to meet you so you're my second cousin twice removed is that yeah, right that's right now, I'm intrigued by this piano. How come you did a DNA search for yourself? Um, I am actually a sperm donor baby. And so my whole life, I've never known half my DNA. So I thought that this would be a great way to kind of understand where I came from, as well as find some relatives. And I was actually able to find some that were related to my biological dad. Right. Um, so I'm able to get some cool information about that. So, and it's just got better because, of course, we're related as well. And I can imagine this yeah. is great news. Because it is for me. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, and it, interestingly, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at you there, Brianna. It feels a little bit like we have similar, do you think, Kate, similar eye shape? I can see that sort of owl, lovely almond eyes. I mm. hers are obviously nicer than yours. Yes. Love, look at, yes, you <laughs> see? There's a slightly crooked smile, really but charming I, That's smile. harsh. I would say sort of cheeky smile. Cheeky, Brianna. cheeky. Can... You're right. You're absolutely right. There's definitely similarities So, there. Brianna, the it must have been really too. fascinating for you as a sperm donor baby to track down some of your, your family that yeah. you, you obviously had no idea existed. Yeah, um, I was able to find a cousin of mine that was my second cousin, and he's very large into the My Heritage. Um, he has an entire extensive family tree, and so I was able to find out who my biological father is, and I'm currently um, trying to get in contact with him to get some more info. Amazing. Well, look, Brianna, thank you so much for joining us. It's lovely to meet m one of my relatives all the way over there in, in Seattle. Uh, yeah. If I ever get out there, we must hook up and, and sort of bond over <laughs> wow. our shared Sickness DNA. Sickness in Seattle. It will Talking be. Talking all night. we get together. Love that, yeah. Uh, now, look, uh, so while Brianna's sitting there in Seattle and she shares my DNA, we found someone that shares Kate's DNA oh, as crikey. well. Uh, on the phone from us for us uh, in Utah in the US is Laura Sanders, who we think is your third My cousin. My third cousin. Now, I have to say... Hang on, uh, how does this work? I have to say, Laura, that the, immediately what I'm looking at is the hair. The two of you oh. share a huge amount of very powerful hair. Yes, we do have similar hair, and it's the same color as well. And I wanted to just say greetings from Dinosaur National Monument in the northwest corner of Colorado. Wow. So you, wow, you know, I've got, we will talk about how to cope with our wiry hair later and our crazy hair later, but you live, you're talking to us on the phone, aren't you? Because you live kind of off the grid, sort of in the middle of nowhere, don't you? Yes. You're snowed in at the moment. Tell us about that. We're looking at some great pictures yes, of you on your ranch. Yes, uh, it's so wonderful to be with you and to make it happen, even though we're snowed in and um, everything worked out okay for me to speak to you. 
even though it seems like I'm on the Oh, we've lost Laura. Now, I'm just looking at pictures of Laura while well, maybe we try and get her back. Swinging wildly on a rope. It's hard to imagine I've got any of that DNA in well, me, isn't it? Because I'm so nervous about it. Bricklayers and carpenters. Laura's got all the sort of the hard grafting, sort of cowgirl, cowboy riding, yes. sort of kayaking. Yeah. Outward bounding. You've always had a thing about cowboy boots. Do you know, I do love a cowboy boot. I don't own a pair, but I'm always saying I love a cowboy boots. But when I put them on, I think it's ridiculous, but I'm drawn to cowboy boots. Maybe you know the, this. I do, I do. I'm, I'm always talking story. about yeah. it. Yeah. Look, there you are. <laughs> okay. Looking the part. Looking the part indeed. Uh, uh, but wow. we've actually found the real deal within your DNA. Um, Laura. That's the reason why. Actually oh, I'm sorry we've lost Laura. I have to have a good chat, but she's a proper cowgirl. She lives off the grid. Naturally. Lives off the grid in the middle of nowhere. I'll try and call her back afterwards. It's, it's and she's got the big hair. Uh, uh, Aaron's going to be back it's a little amazing. bit later on because Charlotte and Richard are going to get their DNA breakdown. Uh, it's going to be fascinating for you trying to piece together Richard's, to be honest, because <laughs> yeah. no, one, no one knows. No where one he's wants from. to. Everyone wants or to deserve him, don't they? Yeah, yeah, where it's come from. Amazing Thank stuff. Thank you very much. Love you, John. Thank you for having me. My was anybody else interested? Was it just to kind of like just sit <laughs> around going, wow? I'm still stuck on my ancestors founding West Ham. I think that's the stuff. That's a that's huge bit of And news. your little Greek holiday romance somewhere in your deep and distant past. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds exciting too, doesn't it? Uh, lots more still to come. You're watching Good Morning Britain on ITV. So just about an hour ago, we were discussing our DNA, because we've done sort of a DNA test on all of us to try and work mm. out where, where on earth we've come from. Uh, we've, we've revealed Kate and mine. I'm 3% I'm Greek, and that one of my ancestors could well have founded West Ham many this years ago. It's just unbelievable, isn't it? Which is just extraordinary. Someone's actually tweeted me a picture of the Thames Ironworks building a tunnel. One of them could be... One of the old boys in the top hats could be one of my ancestors. I know. Look, look for the one with the serious bit of fluff on it. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly the pathetic one. fluff. Yeah, the short one. Uh, and I'm 2% Ashkenazi Jewish, so excited, and kind of genetically related to a real-life cowgirl. Yeah. Unbelievable. Aunt Who, like, swings at a real action girl. And you've America. always loved a pair of cowboy boots as well, I've always you? loved a pair of cowboy uh, boots. Uh, now, now it's Richard and Charlotte's it. turn, though. We don't want to leave you out. This. Uh, so, Charlotte, we can explain that you are 51% English, 23% Irish, Scottish and Welsh, 4% Finnish. Oh, Ooh, I can see that. Finnish. I can see that, 13% yeah. Eastern European and 9% Italian. Wow. Ooh. So one of your ancestors had a little Italian fling, like mine had a Greek I fling. I do like pasta as well. A bit more than yours, because mine's 9%. You obviously enjoyed it more. <laughs> wow. Okay. I like that. Italian. It's amazing. Italian. Mm. And Richard, we've got your results. 41% English, 26% Scandinavian, 12% uh, Irish, Wow, you Irish, do like a Nordic Scottish noir drama, don't you? <laughs> Hold on. 12% <laughs> Balkan and wow. Eastern European. You've got 1% South Asian. Good right? Lord. Did you know that? I had no idea at all, actually. <laughs> uh, the Eastern European thing. A little bit. I always go down well on a mini break when I go to Eastern Europe, so... That would be know, well. Fit in South South Asia. Asia. There's a whole Asia. untapped part of the world, Richard. Isn't they there? Don't know wow. you yet. What a worry. Aaron Godfrey is from the company that did the research and joined us now. Right then, Aaron, talk us through some of the... Because Kate and I have, have, have had some extraordinary Amazing. things explained to us. What about Charlotte and Richard? What royalty? have you got for them? Any royalty in there? Uh, so it's, again, interesting you say that, but, uh, but not, not royalty <laughs> this time. <laughs> not royalty this time, but if you, uh, you had 51.1% uh, 50, English. Yes. So we traced your family back um, in England many generations. And your great, 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 great grandfather That's was cool. called Charles Hawkins. You share the last name. And uh, interestingly, in Liverpool in the 1900s, if, I don't know if you ever saw that episode of Downton Abbey where they first got electricity. Yes. Yeah. But, but Liverpool was one of the first cities in England to get electricity. And um, your great, 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 great grandfather was an electrician at that time. Oh, so one of the founders the behind. Wow. And honestly, the edge if it technology. wasn't for him, you wouldn't be on TV. <gasps> there you go. Oh, Very wow. nice. Okay. Wow, Charles amazing. Hawkins is a regal name. Yeah. Uh, what about Richard? So with you, Richard, um, we have a lot more research still to do. <laughs> He does like to muddy the water. You're so yeah. you, have, uh, you have like a very varied ethnic origins, and it's uh, it's really interesting how it splits. But for your Scandinavian side, yeah. we have found cousins for you in Norway. 
Wow. So wow. if you fancy popping over for Well, a it's little... not cheap, Norway, so I could do with a bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and even on your Eastern European um, side, we found a cousin in New Zealand who shares your Eastern European heritage and uh, also has a crazy story of his uh, grandma fleeing Poland in the 1930s. Wow. He's really spent a lot of time researching his family tree as well. So it's Amazing. utterly fascinating. Oh, my yeah, God, I, I just want more. Uh, well, uh, so Aaron has plenty more, and I'm sure we'll share that with yeah. us uh, when we get off here. But for the time being, I really appreciate you coming Thank in. Thank you Anna. very much, and, and, and there we go. So a little bit of yeah, electricity from so you. And, and, and sort of the Eastern European, South Asian and New Zealand. You yeah. love Down Under, don't you? I do. I'm bihemispheral. You ben. are. I am a spirit. You are. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, uh, you're watching Good Morning Britain on ITV. Lots more still to come.